if I can summarize, we are looking at two different types of models here. We have the first one is x, x times y equals k. k is the invariant. k is the constant that we're looking at. And when we, we have two assets, we generally are looking at, you know, a 50-50 split because that's, that's, that just, it's fair. It could, it could possibly change a little bit, like a dynamic, dynamic different weights for a short term period to prevent some form of, of losses in the trade. But that's, but the idea is that we have two different assets. The weightage is 50 50. And that's where you get your constant. The other asset that we're, the other thing that we talked about today is when the asset has more than, more than two tokens. So let's say three tokens, X, Y, and Z. And it could have all the way up to eight tokens as we seen, as we have seen in Balancer. And, and the, the weightage now is more interesting because with two tokens, you just have a 50 50 token, 50 50 speed, right? With the, when you have more, more tokens, then you change the different ratio. It could be A, B, C. Um, it could be, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. But the sum of A, B, C has to be one, which is what we see over here as well. Because the sum of them has, uh, the sum of these two numbers, they have to add up to one. This is something that is quite important because if you don't add up to one, the, the, the formula just doesn't work. And the cool thing about having, you know, dynamic weights is that as the creator of the pool or, or as the owner of the pool, you get to define the different weights. And these, these weights are the rules to live the rules to live by and they define the different curves that we talked about a lot just now in the different the different visualization of curves. If I can summarize what we have talked about today, it's to look at four different functions of how AMMs can work in the indexes. We also look at the invariant concept K. K is something that's fixed, something that is constant. And you can see that although they are all AMMs, you know, they're all working indexes, the invariant concept is different. So with, with cross-chain functionality, we have k equals a, a is the, a is the value of this, res, uh, the value of this reserve token or the value of the native token, which is in Bancor's case, BNT, divided by the supply and the, the price of the other token that you're exchanging. So let's say Lisa token. So this is, k is the cons, k is the constant, the, the constant value, and that's the ratio between between the market value of BNT versus the market value of Lisa tokens. So that's K. What assets are we talking about here? You have two assets. You have two tokens. One is a native token and one is uh, some other token. So native token will be BNT and some other token will be, let's say, Lisa tokens. And that would be the example of Bancor. Of course, in this example, you don't just trade between Lisa token and Bancor. You more likely want to use Bancor as an intermediary to trade Lisa tokens with something else. So Lisa token with DAI, but you, there is no Lisa token and DAI pairing available. So you have to trade Lisa BNT, BNT DAI. And that's how you indirectly trade for Lisa and DAI tokens. So that's what Bancor does. So it allows for cross-chain in, cross interoperability. The second one is where the function is just the same chain. Do you need a token? No, you don't need a token because if it's the same chain, then there is already, already something that, that connects both of them together. So in Ethereum's case, it's usually Ether or ETH, ETH. Why do we not want to create a new token? Because then you need to get liquidity for that token. You need to get network effects for the token. It's just a lot of unnecessary hassle. You want to get something that's already in the market. With this, a very simple concept is K equals X times Y. Technically, it's K equals, um, if you look at the model, it's just K equals X, Y, but I just want to show you what the balance, the, the weightage is. So I put a 0 0.5 and a 0 0.5. Mathematically, because K is a constant, so you can put K equals X, Y. But I just want to show you that, you know, there's a 0 0.5, there's a 0.5 weight balance in these two tokens. So what assets are we talking about here? We're just talking about two assets. You have another function. We talked a little bit more complex functions. So you have assets with different values. That's that's balancer, so it's, it's a bit more of a portfolio management, but you have different kind of tokens with different weightage. So do you need a token? Not necessarily, because with your with your portfolio, you have eight tokens to choose from. Are you telling me that you, 
you all these eight tokens have so low liquidity that no one is trading. You don't really need a token to allow for inter to allow you to tap into all the other pools available because in eight different tokens you have tokens that's highly traded. So you don't need a token to do that. You you can choose one of these tokens to add into your pool. You have eight spots to choose from, so you can you can add them to your pool. However, a balancer has their own token, but that is not so much a token to facilitate trade. It's more of a it's more of a governance token and a network token, which is different from Bancor's BNT utility token. With this, the invariant is also a bit more complex. I mean, if you look at the, the Uniswap, right, it's X, X times Y, both with a power. Balancer is also similar. You just have X times Y times Z, and you get to define the different weightage that's above. Of course, as you have X, Y, Z are specific tokens. So if you have eight different tokens, then you have eight different things and you have A, B, C, D, E, all the way until H. And you get to choose them. And the thing is, A to H, they, and they, add, they have to add up to one. Not more, not less, just one. The number of assets you can put in can be multiple assets. And because now this is a lot more complicated, you, whatever that we've modeled just now is a 2D model. And now it's a lot more complicated. You need different perspectives. You need different dimensions to look at it. So you don't really model them in, in a curve format, as in the entire, the entire function. But we can take different functions out to analyze on a co like relationship between X versus Y in this, in this balancer pool relationship. And also this is where the math comes in. You, you have less visualization on the, on the curve part, less about calculating area under the curve, more about integrating the, the curve function itself. So this is where things get a bit more complicated. That's where machines are very good at doing that, right? That's why we have machines. And the last one is the assets with the same value. So you once again, you don't need a token. Same with, with balancer, you don't need a token because these assets, they have the similar value and they are also very likely to be traded frequently. And you have a similar kind of invariant concept as well. And the only difference between balancer and curve is that the assets... For Balancer, the assets, they can have different assets. You can have Lisa tokens in there, BAT in there, DAI in there, Ethereum in there, Brett BTC in there, whatever. You can have whatever that you can think of putting in it in there. With Curve is different. With Curve is really similar kind of concept, similar valuation. So Brett BTC versus uh, REN BTC. Similar value and similar assets almost. So that's it. I just want to summarize this in this little table. I will make this table a lot nicer so that you can share it and keep it if you want. Basically, the, the concept that I want to bring across is that number one, token bonding curves can be used in a lot of different ways. Token bonding curves, one of the ways is automated market makers. Number two, what works for one automated market maker doesn't work for all automated market makers because the algorithms for AMMs are quite different based on the based on the different incentives, the different objectives, your different design and model of your ecosystem. I just want to stress that there is no one size fits all model or formula for all the different projects available. And don't be limited to just two different assets. You can have you can expand it to more and more different assets. You can model them in graph. You can model them in mathematics. But don't just limit yourself to two assets. I've been sharing a lot in 2D curves because that's the, the easiest way to get started to understand how two, two tokens interact with each other. But there's endless possibilities with adding more functions, adding more variables, adding more tokens in there. So don't just limit yourself to, to a relationship between two tokens. You can look at relationship between three tokens, four tokens, five tokens. And lastly, the important thing is that you need to have something that's constant. This constant will really define your entire ecosystem, your entire token bonding curve, your entire function. Because this function, this constant function is fixed. And when this, fun this function is fixed for a reason, because your ecosystem needs to have this kind of fixed, fixed feature, especially in automated market makers. You don't need to have this, you don't need to have this invariant concept for all different token bonding curves. That's what I want to say. For different types of token bonding curves, you need different types of inputs and variables. And in this case, for AMMs, you need to have an invariant concept. 
You can have invariant concept in other token bonding curves. You can choose not to have invariant concepts in some token bonding curves. It really depends. So in automated market makers, you need to have that.